So here we're asked to find the x-coordinates of stationary points on a graph, cubic graph. Cubic graphs usually have two stationary points. That's points where the gradient in the graph is equal to zero. And to find the gradient on a graph like this, we would need to differentiate. So we'll take that function and find its derivative. We'll differentiate to find the gradient formula. So that'll be 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. And for stationary points, we'll set that gradient formula equal to 0. So we'll need to solve 3x squared plus 6x minus 24 equals 0. And we have a factor of 3 in this. And this quadratic will factor further. We have an x times an x giving us that x squared. Look at the 8. The last 2 times 4, or 4 times 2, would give us that. Outside 2, 2x. The inside 2, 4x. And we have to get a positive 2x. That would be plus 4x minus 2x, plus the 4x minus the 2x. And just check the lasts. Positive 4 times negative 2 does give us negative 8. Everything seems to be in old order. Always check your factorizations by multiplying them out to see that you do get what you've just factorized. So here we have 3 times something times something is 0. So one or other of these two factors must be 0. So x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0, and that would mean x is negative 4, or x equals 2. So we've achieved a, a negative 4 and a 2 for the two values of x. We've certainly found the x-coordinates of the stationary points on this graph. So part B, determine the range of values of x for which the function is strictly increasing. So let's start with the negative 4, that value of x. And let's look at the gradient formula. We already know that f dashed of x is equal to 0 when x is negative 4. Values just to the left of negative 4, smaller than negative 4, there is the gradient formula. If we look at values just smaller than negative 4, for instance negative 5, this term would be negative. This term certainly would be negative. 3 is positive, so multiplying all these together we've got a positive value. And if we look at values of x just to the right of negative 4, say negative 3, this term's positive. This term's still negative. Positive times negative is negative times the 3 is still negative. So we can deduce the shape of the graph around this value x equals negative 4. Shape of the graph is increasing, stationary, and then decreasing. In other words, x equals negative 4 gives us a, a local maximum value. It's a maximum stationary point. Then if we continue this analysis by looking at the value 2 that we got, let's look at values just to the left of 2. Then, for instance, 1 in there is positive. That's negative. 1 minus 2 is negative. So the product of that will give us a negative value. And if we go just to the right of 
2 and take, say, 3, for instance, this is positive, this also is positive. So they, all these terms are positive, and the product, multiplying them together, gives us a positive term. And remember, at 2, we know the gradient is 0. So the shape of the graph around the value x equals 2, we know is like this. The gradient's going downhill, it's a, a decreasing function at that point, then it's stationary, and then it's increasing. So that's our analysis. And they're asking us to determine the range of values of x for which the function is strictly increasing. And you'll notice that the function is increasing when x is less than negative 4. So function f is increasing for x less than negative 4 and for x greater than 2. So that's the range of values for which x, the function f is increasing. x is less than negative 4 or x is greater than 2.